Hey everyone, it's Mark Sargent, and this is Flat Earth Q&A Emails 13. You guys know the drill by now, so let's just get right into it. This first email is from Eric, uh, and he writes, uh, Disclaimer, please feel free to read everything I share in this email on air, name, location, etc. Full disclosure. Okay, well his last name is Escribano, E-S-C-R-I-B-A-N-O. Canadian here with a public service message to the Flat Earth community. Hi, Mark. I hope you and your listeners are buckled up because this one is a doozy. I began listening to your clues in March of 2015. They weren't all published yet, but after listening to the first one or two, I was in, and boy, did I get in. I binged so much on Flat Earth content that had been exploding all over YouTube that on numerous occasions throughout the months of 2015, I had cell phone bills due to data consumption over $1,000. Now that seems excessive to some, but I knew full well that I was going, that I was doing uh, to my bill and budgeted accor accordingly. I needed to hear it. Something internally was pulling me to consume more and more of the content, screaming to learn more about the topic. I would spend hours driving around for work and I drove a lot on average 4,000 kilometers or roughly 2,500 miles per month, constantly streaming the latest Flat Earth content. I've written to you before and even spoke with you on the phone in the summer of 2015 when I finally reached out, broke down, and went full board Flat Earth. It took me a good six months of tearing down everything I was taught about space to at least admit that I may be a Flat Earther. Looking back, I was probably more of an Earth-shaped skeptic because I still had a lot of questions, and I researched and questioned those questions to death before arriving to today. Let's, let's fast forward to now, because my journey, like many others, has been long. How does a human soul who has accepted that it has been lied to about reality by the powers that be function in a regular society? Well, they function normally, whatever, air quotes, normal is. At first, while I was learning about Flat Earth and following and listening to anyone who had an opinion about it, I was filled with a fiery passion. I wanted to pick up the torches and pitchforks and organize marches to expose the liars and NASA and the authority. But I never did. I never made a video, and I am still regretting not doing that part. But I fear for my career, which unfortunately is my lifeline, and the chain that binds me to this twisted system of slavery. There's enough of the marching and protesting going on right now, but for reasons that the authority has introduced for the masses to fight among themselves. I'm not downplaying these issues, as for many of us, they are very important issues. But you must ask questions as to how or why they came into the limelight. Why is there focus on these issues? How did that focus start or reach critical mass? Just as the authority has orchestrated and done time and time again throughout human history, they will always come up with new reasons for the masses to argue and fight among themselves. That is a truth without question. Proof of distraction, but a distraction from what? I pose a short experiment on air right now to the listeners and to you, Mark. Quiet your mind and think about the daunting and seemingly overwhelming things that you could do to improve your life. Should any one of you eat healthier? Uh, should any one of you eat healthier? Maybe exercise, go for a walk. Should you clean your home? Maybe finish that assignment with that soon approaching deadline. Maybe do some work, call your parents or your partner and tell them how much you love them. Everyone has their own list, things that matter and can improve your life right now if we focused on them. Now shift gears and think about all the things to distract your focus away from these things. Arguing on social media about the latest Kanye or celebrity meltdown or controversy. Rallying still for the some made up political party. Ooh, look, Netflix, video games, latest terror plot, water on Mars, latest SpaceX launch, a success. Asteroid coming close to Earth, be afraid. The list can go on forever. Here's the point. Things that matter come from within. Things that don't are coming from a controlled source, mainstream media, bot Twitter accounts, ghost upvoted Reddit or news articles, featured videos on YouTube's front page, and they are allowed to flourish. If they present a strong distraction and focus shift away from things that matter, here's what I do now. I love my neighbors. I treat everyone around me the way I wish to be treated. And before we lose anyone listening to this, I am not about to jump into a woo-woo come to Jesus speech. What I need to convey, <clears throat> excuse me, in this email to you and to anyone listening is do not fight 
about the Flat Earth topic. Do not pigeonhole yourself into a two-party mentality. The authority has done a very, very good job, especially in the United States, in perpetuating a two-sided good versus evil, Republican or Democrat, I am right and you are wrong, the Earth is flat, the Earth is round, God versus science system. If someone opposes your ideas, do not hate them. Try and practice empathy. Empathy is a skill to be mastered, because each human soul is its own conundrum wrapped in a mystery, baked in a fluffy crust of WTF. We are all entitled to have our opinion. Your opinion or their opinion may be wrong, but you are entitled and free to have it. Attempt and try to put yourself in their shoes. If they have only known a world that is round for their entire lives, it's going to take time. If they have been educated in a degree or field where the earth shape has a role to play in their own ego, then they will need a lot of time to digest any ideas that may shatter their sense of self-worth. If an idea like Flat Earth is going to challenge their beliefs of a world outside their front door, it's going to be a lengthy process overall. Practice patience and do not give up on your beliefs. Always and forever seek the truth and ask questions. Truly explore yourself and what you believe in, because I did, and it nearly broke me. But I believe that may be a part of a point to this new awakening for a large portion of us who have stumbled onto it. We must break down our walls and our beliefs internally by ourselves to come to a true realization. No single person is going to win this movement by arguing face to face, spit flying and blood pumping with someone who is challenging flat earth and surely not going to win or gain anything by arguing in YouTube comments. Each soul must be broken and been built back up by the truth. And that battle must happen by yourself in your own head through quiet contemplation and critical thinking. Okay, so it was a bit of a woo-woo speech, sorry. Don't hate the Canadian. Mark, you have been an inspiration in this time of awakening, as well as many others, and I don't believe you need me, an anonymous bit of word on a computer screen, to tell you to keep going, uh, keep doing what you are doing, but please heed my message. Be strong, be confident, and do not let the draining, never-ending criticisms and hate-spewing slander break your spirit, or anyone listening for that matter. Do not let the hate and instigation break your will, for that is their game, and the, the authority is very well versed in manipulating the flow of human emotion and reaction. Thank you, Mark, and thank you for doing what you do. I appreciate you making in this uh, making it this far in my email, and for any listeners who have made it without nodding off. Uh, keep on keeping on, Eric Escrabano from Flat Canada. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. That was, that was good. Good email. Solid. I don't know what I can follow with that with. Oh, uh, how about this one? This one's from, who's this from? Barbara. Uh, hey, Mark, do you have a phone number for the gentleman that makes the flat earth models? I would like to order one. Can't seem to find video with his name, address, or phone number. I recently had PC, issue, PC issues and lost saved stuff. Thanks, Barbara. Uh, yeah, his name's uh, Chris Pontius, and you can actually look him up if you want to see the model. I've got two different videos on it. One is the one that he sent me that I made a video about, and other people kind of shared around. It looks, uh, you know, it's a it's a mechanical model. It's not a computer model. And so his name is Chris Pontius, C-H-R-I-S-P-O-N-I-T-U-S. If you want to look that up, just type in Chris Pontius Flat, and it'll show up in YouTube, and, and you can see the model for yourself. And if you want to contact him, uh, you can email him directly, I don't have a phone number, uh, at flat in it. So flat and then in and then it at gmail.com. See, get it? Flatten it? Get it? Anyway, so yeah, if you guys want a model for Christmas, it'd be a great gift. They are not cheap. I, I will tell you right that that right now, but they are they're high quality. They're super cool models. I don't know how many he's got not in stock. But he's making these suckers from scratch, and he's been refining them, and it's very, very cool. And the one you see in the video that I opened up, you, it's, it's pretty cool because the Ring of Fire, if anyone knows you know, the volcanic attack uh, activity uh, you know, on the Pacific Rim, when you make that, turn that into a flat map, it becomes almost a straight line. It's a line of fire, which is really odd, so I really dig it. So check it out. If you guys want a flat model, check out Chris Pontius stuff. Uh, let's see here. Michael Hughes, right? So is it Michael? Uh, yeah, Michael Hughes. Uh, just watched the video series on Flat Earth. Just began researching this about three months ago. The planes in the Southern Hemisphere and Admiral Byrd are a good argument. Like everything else I have discovered in my 60 years, 
together and he's 60 years, 60 years old. Everything is a lie or fraudulent. The courts, the wars, the schools, and at last, the round earth. My website is madmikehughes.com. Uh, self-taught rocket scientist, my friend and myself have devised a plan to get me into space 62 miles up without a spacecraft, start to finish in three hours. This would prove or disprove a lot of things. Also, there are a lot of satellites in orbit, right? I've heard 25,000 of them. Thanks, Michael Hughes. Uh, now look at all the capitalization of our names and blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, so you, Michael, do me a follow-up email on that. If, you, if you've got a friend that can actually get you 62 miles in, in, up into space, start to finish in three hours without dying, I'd love to know how you're going to do it. Uh, but if you can, hey, you might be able to prove something. So good for you. Lauren writes... Uh, Lauren in Pennsylvania. Hi, Mark. Surely by now they must know that they are perpetrating fraud. How can an event that never happened be commemorated? Maybe we should let them know a very important maxim of law. Fraud negates consent. Ah, this age of revelation. I love it. Graciously, Lauren in Pennsylvania. And what did she forward me? Um, oh, yeah, the Apollo 11 commemoratives. Collectors called upon to support the Apollo 11 commemoratives. Uh-huh. For the next few weeks, collectors and space program enthusiasts are turning their attention to the Apollo 11 moon landing and its 50th anniversary in 2019. Uh-huh. That's going to go over well. Absolutely. Talk about your fraud. Uh, next email is from... Who's it from? Jeffrey. Each segment was beautifully executed. He's talking about flattered clues. With uh, all following segments even more beautiful in their content, execution, and delivery of the most powerful message to insight change I've ever come across. Wow. Thank you, man. That's a wonderful compliment. Thank you. I would like to link your presentation to our Developing Foundation site below and would like to work it into the six associated sites we are building. You provide a valuable tool for personal and global um, betterment. It's as if we, uh, as if we were a message from the architect. Architect, is it? As that was his last question. Is it a message from the architect? I believe it is. I do. I, I think that the system was always supposed to be discovered, and I think we've been we've been figuring this out by ourselves. But we've been stunted from finding it out by by the powers that be. Again, science found it first, and since it goes against science, they're going to bury it. They're going to hide it for as long as they can. The science is going to be dragged. Talk about. I am going to use irony, I think, correctly here. Talk about science being dragged, kicking and screaming into the new world when that's what they've been accusing us of, you know, or, you know, people on the, on the other side of the fence. They've been, they've been going after religion, you know, religion will be, you know, dra ki drug kicking and screaming into the 21st century. And here now science is going to be hiding the real truth about the world. Fantastic. Uh, let's see here. This one is from Aster, A-S-T-E-R. Good morning. I gather from your area code you live somewhere in Colorado. Well, the phone number is Colorado, but I am currently up in Victoria, Canada. Uh, watched your entire two-hour documentary, Flat Earth Clues, today. Well done. Have a few questions. Explain how weather across the planet is micromanaged. If being controlled how and by whom, hurricanes. I think that the system, the enclosed world, has its own weather system in place. Not weather system controls in place and i think we have the ability maybe through harp maybe through other military technologies to alter that somewhat but i think the system tries to counteract it and which is why we come up with this weird weird weather because i think when we mess with something the system tries to compensate uh sun 24 7 365 natural movement appearance independently seen from any location worldwide uh, yeah again look at look in ditrh's youtube channel and zeteticism.com channel if you want to see stuff on the sun I'm not going to go into it here because it's an email show. Uh, oceans, tidal activity. If not lunar, then how could this manipulate it? A molecular magnetism. Tell me what. In fact, I was thinking about that. I was, I was oh, going for a walk today, which was because people say, well, you know, Flat Earth doesn't believe in gravity. It's like, no, 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 no. It's not that Flat Earth doesn't believe in gravity. Tell me what gravity is. Tell, Look it up. Look up. Tell me what mainstream science says gravity is. Gravity says, mainstream science says that gravity really is a form of molecular magnetism. It is a force that pulls things to, you know, the mass that pulls on other masses. What is the difference between that and molecular magnetism? You tell me what it is. So anyway, if, if gravity is control, you know, is partly holding down the oceans and the moon supposedly is, is controlling it, but that's not the case, then all the controls have to be from below. 
So the ocean's tides have to be controlled from underneath the system. They can't be controlled. Well, I mean, I suppose they could, but why would you use a device that's only, you know, a moon that's only 30 miles wide? You know, talk about your weird magnetic fluctuations you would get from that thing. Anyway, uh, just a few thoughts off the top of my head. Uh, as a philosopher, new and old theories are very interesting to me. Have a great day. Cheers, Aster. And yeah, Aster, if hopefully, if you're, if you're listening to this, uh, just, again, just go on YouTube and type in Flat Earth, and there's a lot of content to go through. By the time you sift through it, you probably have more quest questions than answers, but that's the whole point. Uh, let's see. Next one's from, is that Janus? Janus? It's got a little dash over the top, so I don't think he's from... Oh, he's Latvia. Okay. Uh, hi, this is just a ping test, so I can check. Is it possible to contact with you? Greetings from Latvia. Do you know where it is? No, I do not. I'd have to look it up. I'm sure that it is over in Asia, though. I am not a scientist or with high degree of any science, but recently I got a lot of useful information and context flat earth related. Is it possible to contact you with using Skype uh, or any other online voice call, Mr. Janice B? Yeah, if you're international, I, I will I will try, If, if you know, de depending on the time zones, because there's so many time zones between the western part of the United States and Canada and uh, where you are that uh, we may not be able to connect. But we'll see. Maybe. So I, I, I sent him my Skype information. Uh, let's see. James? James writes. Is it James? Yeah. Mark, I have watched your program on the flat earth and it has floored me. I feel that the only way to prove the earth is flat is to get hard evidence. There must be some way to set out on an expedition to prove the earth is flat. What if a boat took a trip from the southern tip of South America and kept going all the way around the earth? Wouldn't you be able to prove it is round or flat? Please get back to me, James Goldberg. Uh, yeah, James, you're absolutely right. In fact, there's easier way to even doing a boat. I, I've thought of this last year, which is you take one boat, you know, take one boat. You don't even have to have it go anywhere. Just have it sit off the coastline, you know, within visual distance, you know, telescope range. Of course, that's going to be tough with the Antarctic Treaty now. But you, you put that boat off the coastline of Antarctica and you, then you get a plane to fly over that boat and then just start doing either a, a big right hand turn or a big left hand turn, depending on what you're looking at and see if they can circumnavigate the continent of Antarctica without running out of fuel. And if it is as big as they say it is, mainstream science, they should be able to circle Antarctica and come back to that boat in, um, I don't know, 14, 15 hours, maybe? Maybe less, I'm not sure, depending on what kind of plane you use. And if not, you're gonna have to refuel somewhere. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to, that plane's gonna have to veer off and GPS is gonna give them false readings. So, and the reason why I say, that you'd want that plane to be within visual distance of the coastline is so that you don't use GPS. Not to quote a line from the Matrix, but GPS works for the system. So you don't want to use GPS. If you can avoid it, that's the system you got to get away from. Because remember, that's United States DOD system created 20 years ago. Uh, Lin Chi? What country is this guy from? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, this is kind of a dark email, but I'm gonna, I, there's an email chain here. It's, it's short. It, it calls, is it real? Oh, God, I feel like the way out is suicide. What to do help? And I said, you're fine. Once the initial shock wears off, it'll feel like a warm blanket. Trust me, Mark. That's how I responded. And then he responded, awesome, guys. You absolutely changed my mind. But how to live with that people, uh, I, I don't know. I think he's Asian. Uh, that live in a lie and how to change that. I want to know more. Please stay on a line. I know how to describe the planet. My girlfriend is so scared about me. She thinks I am on LSD or some kind of drug. I need to know if there are is more people than me who understand that and what it means. I feel like I am be, I am behind me and I can see me. Uh, that's ridiculous. Oh, my English isn't that good with grammar, but when people in the video talk and video screen, I absolutely understand more than normally. It is real. Is it real? It's unlocking new parts of my brain. Yes, I, I think he absolutely is unlocking new parts of your brain. Uh, hang tough. I don't. Not many people have died, as far as I know, in the flat Earth. I, uh, Tiger Dan may be one of them, but other than that, I think we've got a, a pretty good high um, survival rate. Ah, T. Okay. <clears throat> Wow, this letter was sent to me in probably 80-point font by a guy named Modi, M-O-D-I. 
Hi, thanks. Thank you for helping with my questions. I have watched many vids by you and others, and it seems to me that a flat, motionless Earth is where we live. Just one question has been daunting me, though. Perhaps you can help. I am sure that I have just been missing the answer. Why do we keep trying to go south to Antarctica? Isn't Antarctica all around the flat Earth? Can't we get to the edge in any direction? Why can't we find the edge or endless land in any direction, Modi? Uh, well, Modi, the reason why you're not going to be able to find the edge is because the edge, I mean, yeah, the coastline of Antarctica is where they say it is. You know, it's, it's off the, the tip of South America or the tip of Africa, depending on which way you go. Those are the closest destinations. South America is the closest. Um, but there seems to be a, a pretty big chunk of land between the Antarctica. By the time when you go from the beach in Antarctica to wherever the edge of this thing is, you know, the, the barrier of this is. And I'm not saying an edge like fall off the edge type edge. I'm talking the barrier. Uh, it's a it's a great distance. It's got to be several thousand miles because Admiral Byrd was looking for it the better part of 30 years. And he was a pilot. He wasn't going out there with sled dogs and snowmobiles and stuff. He was a he was a pilot flying around for the better part of 30 years, you know, with fuel dumps and the whole nine yards, trying to make it out there. And eventually he did find it, in my, my opinion, anyway. So the average person, and after they he found it, you know, everyone got off the ice and then they sealed it off. The Antarctic Treaty, the, the only treaty in the world that has been kept for this long, and it's not even up for debate until 2041. Uh, no one gets, no corporation gets to go down there, and any person that wants to go down there, they're pretty much restricted to cl cl shoreline close distances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can take an escorted trip out to what they say is the South Pole, but that's about it. Then they turn you around. So no, the average person cannot go down there. And if you're super rich, you probably can't go down either because someone will get a hold of you and say you don't want to go down there because rich people, remember, they have more to lose. Uh, this one's from King McRae. Really, your first name's King? Well, maybe. Hello, Mark. I just saw your documentary, They Are Hiding God with the Greatest Lie Ever on YouTube. I just wanted to say thank you for all your efforts in putting it together. I found it to be very informative and concise. I have been a flat earth believer for quite some time, but was looking for the burning question of why to be answered. And your video has shed a tremendous light on such. I won't take up any more of your time. I just wanted you to know that your work was and is greatly appreciated. Have a great day and keep spreading the truth. Sincerely, King McRae. Fantastic, King. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Todd writes, Hi, Mark. I'd love to get your uh, SHTF prep guide. Thank you for all your great work. Keep at it. Warrant. And I'm pretty sure I sent it to him. Uh, yeah, I, I made, I had a website called Urban Survival USA after I, after the uh, Katrina thing happened. I was really disgusted that more more people didn't have survival gear. You know, the whole city was pretty much wiped out. And most of, most of the city had to evacuate, but only half the people came back. But out of those people that came back, most of those still didn't even get a you know a case of water and some batteries and you know a little food, a flashlight, stuff like that. They didn't do it. So I wrote up a manual called Empty Shelves that was really designed for Americans because Americans are notoriously lazy when it comes to this. And uh, I just I was a hundred pages long, put it in a little PDF file and did a website. And I said, look, if anyone wants it, free. That's two megs. I'll send it to you. Just Email me, put in the subject line, uh, survival guide, prep guide, whatever you want to, shit that hits, hits the fan guide. I don't care. Whatever it is, I'll, I'll send it to you. And, you know, hopefully you won't have to use it. The only, my, my only thing that if I send it to you, here's a little tip. Try to print it out before the power goes out. Because it's meant for long-term power outages. It's not designed specifically for zombies or meteors or some sort of contagion or anything like that. It's, it's just a, a extended power outage guide. But I think it's pretty good. I mean, I've, I've gotten compliments for it. So, but I'm not going to sell it because, you know, if it helps save lives, it should be free. Uh, let's see here. Jack writes. Mark, just skip my real name. All right. I will. Hopefully it's not Jack. I've emailed you a couple of times and I've watched all the videos on your channel. They're thought provoking and well done. Recently, I talked to a friend about flat earth and I thought he raised a good point. If you're watching the sun set over the ocean, at some point it becomes a half circle, then a quarter circle, etc. Then it gets dark. This seems consistent with a globe, but harder for my friend to see as consistent with a flat earth unless we imagine the sun dropping below the rim of Antarctic ice. If this were the explanation, then presumably the sun would be circling under the flat earth to the other side, that is, circling until the next morning. I've watched the sun set over oceans and bays many times, and I've seen its disc, disc slip below the horizon, and I have witnessed that moment when the sun appears to be cut in half by the horizon. I'm having trouble explaining that on a flat earth. Can you help me out? Thanks. Not Jack. New York, New York City. 
yeah, not Jack. Here's the deal. Look, when it, when it comes to the sun, two sites, I, I, I'm, I'm just going to keep sending people their way because they've spent a lot more time on it than I have. Is uh, one is deep inside the rabbit hole, which is also known as DITRH. That's a great YouTube channel, and the other one is the Tedicism.com, otherwise known as Jeffrey Grupp, G R U P P. They have both done extensive work on the sun and lighting effects of the sky. Go there, I guarantee you, you know, because I'm not gonna be able to do much without showing you, so that's what I'm doing. Pictures worth a thousand words. Go to the though these people's websites, you will learn volumes. Uh, let's see here. This one's done by Steve. Steve says, hey, yes, Sarge. Hey, somebody used my nickname. I, Sarge was one of my nicknames. Just wanted to share since I got about a pallet load of these old mint condition National Geographic magazines looking for any. When I read that it was founded in 1888 by 33 prominent professional gentlemen, then suddenly my alarms went off. Makes sense to me that they want to fake this creation and explain it all away as something it's not. Why not create the de facto standard publication since Roman times? Yeah, National Geographic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. National Geograph Geographic is a, is a perfect example of, of a media thing you'd want to get into because you know, the school systems completely endorse that one. Okay, this one's by John. John Arnold. If gravity holds the oceans on Earth, then why can't we get the water to stay in a pond on a slope without the water running out? I guess my water isn't aware of how gravity works. Confused in Kentucky. I also went to our local bookstore in Moorhead, Kentucky, the Fuzzy Duck, and asked if they had any books on the flat earth. It's run by local college kids, Moorhead State University. I think two of the young men in the store studying thought I'd lost my mind, but I got them talking and thinking about it. Keep up the good work, John Arnold. Far as I know, I am no relation to Kenneth Arnold, the pilot of UFO fame. And you're absolutely right, Kenneth Arnold, good reference there. Kenneth Arnold was the guy up in Washington State, of all places, that coined the term flying saucers. Didn't coin the term UFO, but he did coin the, coin the term flying saucers, where he was flying in a Cessna in the late 40s near Mount Rainier, and he saw a squadron of UFOs below him uh, hugging the tree line. And, and they, he, he seemed, they seemed to be sort of tethered together by something, you know, some sort of unseen you know, energy being. And it was he thought they were really neat. They looked like upside down um, teacup saucers. And I thought that was really, really interesting because many years later, when I was looking up in the sky with night vision binoculars, I saw the same sort of thing where, and I call it driver's ed now, where it seemed like a training mission, you know, where and they only happened during a certain type of day. And it was a squadron that, you know, in a V formation that would be flying around the sky at, at unbelievable speeds without any sound. And going from horizon to horizon very rapidly, but they seem like they were tethered, like something. And you know, people say, "Oh, no, it's like birds." And I'm like, "No, no, it's like birds, but it's not birds." I mean, our planes fly in formation. Are those birds? No. So don't tell me they're birds. Flying in formation—that's not exactly you know a thing just for animals. Uh, this email's from Mike. Uh, Mike Horde out of Marietta, Georgia. I hope I don't come off too preachy. That's a good way to start, but I'm going to read it anyway. Mark, I too have been guilty of assuming that God enlists helpers in creating the earth. It would seem to make sense, but Isaiah 44, 24 says that he did it all by himself. And 24 says, uh, Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, and he ha that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that make maketh all things that stretch... Wow tongue twister that stretcheth forth the heavens alone that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself he speaks plainly it is us that has the problem of believing what he says even after all i have learned i still find myself having to go back and absorb plainly spoken basic things the first thing the bible says is that god made the heaven and the earth this means he made the earth and the dome first one more small tangent science knows that at one time the earth was once covered in water and that the earth was once a supercontinent otherwise known as pangaea he didn't write that i did uh, this is covered in the first nine verses of the Bible. Science gives no credit for this. How would Moses have known these things? Finally, science really doesn't know where the water came from, but the answer is that it was here from the beginning, just as the Bible tells us in verse 2. 
Science tells us that most likely the Earth was just pelted by icy comets that delivered just the right amount of water for us. Science will believe anything but what the Bible tells us. It is like we have a rebellious teenager at the wheel telling us that we are wrong about everything because the truth is just too much or too undesirable to handle. Thanks. Thank you. That was a great email. That wasn't too preachy. Could have been worse. Seriously. Uh, let's get to this one. This one is by Jens. Jens Rivera. What's up, brother? Hope all is well. So I wanted to ask you, dot, dot, dot. What if the reason the sun looks bigger sometimes and the moon is not just light refraction or magnification from water vapor, but instead as they go around the flat earth, they also have an up and down movement getting closer and farther from us? Could explain tides as well. Also a little side point. What if the moon illum illuminates at different levels because it's moving through the charged particles created by the sun moving up and down and around through this energy field? Anyway, bro. I love this topic. The earth is flat. And that is that peace in the Middle East. I'm out. <laughs> I'm going to have to steal that one. That's awesome. Peace in the Middle East. Uh, let's see. This one's from Tyler. I just watched your video on YouTube and I am fascinated by your theories. How are you? I think we could both benefit from talking sometime soon. <laughs> well, Tyler, I am fine. Uh, currently, I am, I am visiting my lovely girlfriend up in Victoria, Canada. And uh, Flat Earth is going super well, and everybody seems to be positive, and the thing just keeps growing and getting bigger and bigger. Uh, so if you still want to talk, uh, hopefully, you know, he, he put his phone number down here. I don't generally call people directly on an email that short, but who knows? Maybe he'll write back and say some more stuff. Steve writes. What does Steve write? Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here. Oh, yeah, this is kind of interesting. I remember this one. I do screen the emails just a little bit just to make sure they're not solicitations or anything. I mean, I'll read like the first paragraph and I'll go into the middle and maybe the end and I'll say, okay, it looks like I'll throw it in there. But a lot of these I'm reading for the first time, obviously, because I'm not, I don't run it through an external spell checker, grammar thing. I just read it as it. So if, if you're not from this country uh, and you butchered the English, I'm going to reflect some of that. Uh, hi, Mark. Many thanks for all the work that you do and your video, Flat Earth Clues Under the Dome, that woke me up last April of 2016. A little about us. About 10 years ago, we worked with promoting the late Aaron Russo and his newly released film, America, Freedom to Fascism. From that, we started up America Underground Network with the purpose of 9-11 Truth and giving our guests a venue, freedom, so on, so on. Uh, we had a chance to interview John McIntyre on our show two months ago, who did an awesome video showing no curvature of the earth from his photography in the North Carolina mountains. John's wife also took off from work to be able to join us with John on our, our broadcast, who was really a nice addition since she very much helped in producing his YouTube project. And then he sends the audio link and it's from a, a talk show podcast. Along with that, I thought you might find my below mailing very interesting. If you don't already know about the United States Mint's heliocentric globe coin from 2015, below is the mailing that I sent out today to friends. And this is interesting. He goes, and this is it, some correspondence between he and another guy. Uh, it starts out with, this is something that absolutely amazes me. Last year on December 3rd, 2015, the United States Mint started selling the first U.S. coin with an imprinted image of the heliocentric version of the Earth. Strangely enough, the United States Mint only minted 4,000 of these proof coins and put them on their website at noon Eastern Standard Time at a selling price of $1,200 per coin. Was well, that gold or silver? It's got to be gold, $1,200 a coin. Uh, $1,200 each. Looks like a New World Order image for sure. And I'm looking at the coin, and sure enough, it's got the Earth and the Sun kind of behind it, an eagle flying up from it, and, and then, of course, a Statue of Liberty type woman that's waiting for the eagle. Uh, the coin sold out in seven minutes. $1,200 times 4,000 coins uh, is just under $5 million in the United States. Sell out in seven minutes. Now for the very strange part. If you go to the United States Mint's website today and click on a product schedule for coins, you have two options, the complete 2015 schedule or the complete 2016 schedule. Uh, shortly after the sellout, last December of this 2015, oh, it was platinum coin of the United States Mint, removed, which is very similar to gold in price, uh, removed all listings information about this coin from their website like it never existed. I even called a toll-free number for the United States Mint and inquired to why it was removed and was told by their customer service they don't even have a record for one being sold in 2015. 
Only the Platinum 2016 coin was made and sold. Yet when you go to the product schedule for 2016, the site shows the 2016 with proof Platinum Eagle went on sale June 30th, 2016 for $1,300 and states in writing, second release of a special two-year series. Very strange indeed. Why the cover-up of the 2015 Globe coin? I believe that denying Almighty God of his creation does not come without consequences. Could it be that someone in the United States Treasury Department had some second thoughts about this after it sold out and removed all mention of it from the U.S. government mint's website? If so, who authorized its archived removal? As we know, Obama made many public mentions of the Flat Earth and the Flat Earth Society in jest. Best wishes, Steve. Good point. And, you know, I'm looking at the picture of this coin. And it's very, very interesting. Yeah, it's a glo it's uh, you. He's right. I've never seen a globe Earth. Now, I have seen a, a globe Earth, a very small one on another coin. And that would be the Eisenhower dollar that ran in the 70s. But it was very small compared to this thing. And it wasn't nearly as high profile. I mean, the dollar dollar was just a dollar. But this is a $1,200 coin. So anyway, thank you, Steve. That's awesome. Moving on. I think this one's from Daniel. Uh, let's see here. Mark left you a brief voicemail. I'm sure that you must be inundated with calls, messages, emails, and I can only imagine that a lot of them are more than worthy of eye rolls and laughs. And not as many as you might think. But all jokes aside, what's next? I really enjoyed your video. They are hiding God with the greatest lie ever, and I found it to be one of the most detailed accounts into why and not just the whole theory about the physical explanations that most videos focus on. So what's next? In your video, you have uh, made a call to action asking for people to spread the idea, share the controversy, question everything. I've been doing that for most of my life and I want to do more, but I am a little apprehensive. Recent mainstream media reports have indicated that the Flat Earth Movement is now being disclosed as a, C oh, a CIA PSYOP and so to me, this seems like now they will shift their focus from ridiculing the nutcases to reining in the rebels. I really hope that you are not just a shill for the spooks working to get all the hungry moles to come out of their holes only to find themselves in the flat end of a whacking stick. But if you are not a shill and are actually trying to wake everyone up, then please give me a call. Oh, come on, man. That's not fair. Uh, you, you can't... You can't just say, well, if you don't call me, you're a shill. That's an awful, really? What do I have to offer? Well, I spent my youth growing up in Africa and India, flying around the world many times. I didn't grow up indoctrinated by the media. Like the majority of the Western society has been. I am an Aquarius and have always been a seeker of the truth. I've always believed in my core that we were being lied to about our world, our history, the true origin of life, and the true meaning of God. Since becoming a Freemason in 2009 and now currently sitting as the worshipful, worshipful master of my large lodge, I have more questions than ever. I fear that I may have inadvertently placed myself in a very precarious position as my attempts to discuss the flat earth matter with some higher ranking Masonic members have resulted in being told to be quiet. And now I feel I may have ruffled some very hawkish feathers. Hmm. I don't see how. And I, I actually I'm going to, I'm planning on talking to this guy. Uh, because you know, because I did, in fact, I sent him a link because remember I had interviewed a 32nd degree Mason recently on this sort of thing and um, uh, I wanted to know a little bit more about it. So um, I, I don't think that there's any Masons. I, I, it can't be that many actual full-blown 33rd degree and 32nd degree Masons that know about this. I mean, I it took me a long time to decipher the tracing boards and after, you know, the five five Masonic tracing boards, and after I was looking, I was pretty much convinced that most Masons have no idea what they're looking at. There, there's layers and layers and layers of secrets, so many that they don't know, you know, they cannot see the forest for the trees. But that's another story for another time. Uh, next email, and this is kind of a response to the, um, the guy that called in on Tra Strange World that was confused about the the Earth and how it, the speed that it was spinning at the equator versus the speed it was spinning at the North Pole and everything in between. Uh, hi, Mark. I'm about 10 minutes into Strange World 81 listening to your confused caller talking about how the speed of the ball Earth has to be the same, 1,040 miles an hour everywhere, and therefore it has to be a Rubik's Cube. There are a few ways to explain it. Imagine drilling a quarter-inch hole at 1,000 RPM. The outside edge of the drill bit travels at 0.78 inches. Uh, uh, every rotation, so 785 inches every minute. Stick a, on one of those four inch hole saws, and then the outside edge of the bit is covering over 12.5 inches in every rotation. So 12,500 inches every minute at 1,000 RPM, about 16 times as much as a quarter inch bit. That is why machinists, joiners, woodworkers use lower RPMs for larger bits. Yeah, I, I know where you're going right here. 
Or think of a car going around a corner. The wheels on the outside of the curve cover more ground than the wheels on the inside of the curve, hence why cars have differentials to allow for different speeds. Or think of a CD in one of those players uh, with the window where you can actually see the disc spinning. When the CD is near the end of the album, near the outside of the disc, uh, the CD RPM slows down, unlike uh, records which are cut at a constant RPM throughout the media, so the analog waves are stretched or squashed equally and op uh, oppositely on recording and playback. So on and so on. He, he gets, he gets, he doesn't have to give me, I'm not going to read the, the rest of the examples. Um, but I will read his P.S. and he signs his Lunar Tech. P.S. Best wishes to you and the usual suspects in the Flat Earth community, but I'd like to make a special mention about someone who's not strictly a Flat Earther, but who's certainly open-minded, and I suppose you could call Flat Earth friendly. That is Chris over at Take Back Space. He hasn't streamed the moon in over two months now, and I gather he's needing to have some surgery for a torn muscle. Hope you're better soon, Chris. I hope so, too. And the example that I, I still want to give people, because we all know this from our childhood days, which is the merry-go-round. Which is, look, it is when you're on the outside of the merry-go-round, the faster it goes, the, the more uh, G-force is going to be pushing against you, and you're going to want to fly off that thing. But you can stand, everyone stood, you stand in the middle of that merry-go-round, you're just going to turn in a slow circle. It, you're going to feel practically nothing. That's because you're not going anywhere. You're not traveling any distance. Uh, the G-Force has no power over you because you're the center of that thing. So uh, I don't know why the, the the man who called me was was a little confused and thought that the world had to be a Rubik's cube. But then again, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make fun of him for it because look, I started out in flat Earth. I opened my day with flat Earth. I have a big bowl of flat Earth flakes. That's what I have. So anybody that comes up with an idea, I'm not, I'm not gonna laugh. I'm in fact, I don't think I've laughed at anybody's idea since. You know, I, I mean, you, you, I, no, I do not believe in things like um, Elvis still being alive, stuff like that. But the rest of them, I'm not going to shoot down. Uh, hi, Mark. was listening to A Strange World this morning on our way back to work. One of your callers mentioned Peru because it is a similar time zone. I think that was the context. My wife is in Peru and I have pretty much instant access to someone there to take a picture and compare it to what I see in Massachusetts. Is this helpful in any way? Let me know if there's any experiments we can conduct. Uh, yeah, I, we'll see if that one guy calls me back and, and, you know, I know he's looking for people in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, but I'll, I'll see if I can help with trying to organize some sort of test. Uh, let's see here. How much time we got left? Oh, we got a little time. 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Uh, this one's from, uh, Slay Me. Oh, say, say, ooh, wow. S-E-I-G-H-M-E. I do not know how, to, know how to pronounce that. Hey, Mark, do you think he was down there? He's talking about Buzz Aldrin evacuated from Antarctica. Do you think he was down there knowing his health was failing and wanted to actually see uh, the dome before he passed away? Was he threatening to go public and someone made him sick to protect their interests? Maybe he made a wailing wall type of trip to go beg forgiveness at an unmistakable creation of God. Oh, interesting. Uh, spell checked and indented for your on-air reading pleasure because I love the show. And by the way, you, you say that, but in the very beginning, the very first line, um, you he said failing and wanted to see the sum, and that's because it corrected it from whatever it was instead of dome. But I saw I knew what you were going with that. So remember, spell check is one thing, but you got to read it after it's spell checked because just spell check will put in words that that oh yeah they're good words, but they don't make sense. Uh, spell check and uh, I look forward to Wednesday morning listening to TFR after the show is uploaded, but I hate waiting a whole week for the next episode. I'm sorry, man. Who knows? Maybe if it gets more popular, maybe I'll do more than one show a week. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, also, I was driving one day watching a plane level with Horizon coming into a landing at a base I knew was 12 miles away. It came flat across the sky. I saw wingtips, but not the underbelly. Due to the obvious documented, verified, proven, unshakable, indisputable curvature of the Earth, there should have been eight feet of curve from my point of view looking at where the plane was setting down. I believe the plane should have been parallel to the ground over there on that side of the ball, but the wings were not pitched up in any way. When I see planes far away, I should see more often the underbelly of the beast, not the perfect profile as is usually what happens. Happy to be partially to completely nuts. Glad I'm not Buzz Lightyear Aldrin. Say me. I think that's how you pronounce it. So thank you very much, man. Awesome. I'm glad you're a listener to the show. 
And he's talking about Strange World, which is on Tuesday nights live on Truth Frequency Radio. And then I post them usually Wednesday on uh, YouTube. Uh, this email from Mike is called Hubble Can See the Moon. Wikipedia shows Tycho from the Hubble. So why can't they show us the landing sites? Good point. Why can't the Hubble just spin to the moon and focus in on the um, uh, Sea of Tranquility? Why can't they? They should be able to get some great shots. I was just looking to see how big the craters were and why we can see them from Earth so easily. Mike Hoard in Atlanta. Awesome question, Mike. Good one. Why can't? Why isn't anyone taking a really good picture of the Sea of Tranquility? Well, hell, if you're going to go that far, look at the JAXA program. The Japanese JAXA. Look that up. Some years ago, they sent a high-definition satellite probe around the moon. The only thing interesting to look at on the moon, if you believe in mainstream science, is the Sea of Tranquility because all the Americans' junk is still there. And it's all metallic. Should be easy to pick up. Yet, nothing. They never show you jack. Carol. Is it Carol? I think it's Carol. Carol writes, Mark, saw this article about a new, more accurate world map today on Facebook. Yeah, I know. We've all seen it. I think it was done by a Japanese guy. While it's not yet the true flat earth map we would like to see, perhaps this new map is cultural conditioning to prepare the world for the coming revelation of the true enclosed world. Here's a link to the Architectural Digest article on the new map. Blessings, Carol Hester. And what I love about Carol is her P.S., is actually bigger than the letter. So her PS is, PS, I wrote you a while back to tell you how I became a flat earther. If you read or remember my email, I'm the one that your flat earth clues started playing automatically on YouTube after I watched another video that had nothing to do with flat earth. In fact, I'd never heard of flat earth, so I had no idea or how or why the clues came up. When I began playing, I was across the room and was aghast at the preposterousness of it. I walked over to turn it off. In those few seconds, my interest was piqued, and being a former science teacher who doesn't believe the evolution account, I decided to keep an open mind and listen to all your clues. Long story short, after further investigation, Brian Mullins, Jeffrey Grupp, uh, Crow777, personal observation and a rereading of the Bible accounts of the world creation and nature, I was convinced. Already a committed Christian, this has led me on a spiritual journey of rereading the Bible uh, with a new perspective that is quite incredible, and for that I thank you. Sometimes I wonder if it was a God thing that clues started playing automatically. Knowing that you are someone who respects faith and has some knowledge and experience with Christianity, I hope you'll appreciate that I pray for you and the movement. Fantastic. Thank you, Carol. That's, that's the best PS ever, and I love the fact that it was three times longer than the email. I love those. That's great. Uh, I've got a few more we can pump in here. This one's from Rob. Rob, just watch the YouTube video. You actually see the curve increase as the plane banks to the right, complete and other BS, and then the shot of him looking at the rear, beautiful flat line. Well, worth a watch just for the laugh. Yeah, yeah. watch the um, uh, the debunker. Oh, who are those guys? What was it? It was uh, Mythbusters. Yeah, Myth Mythbusters doing a... Um, uh, one of them flew up in a U-2 spy plane and said, went out of his way, said, oh, I can see a beautiful curve of the Earth. Earth, really? At 60,000 feet? Really? You can see a beautiful, or whatever he was, 70,000, I don't care what he was at. You know, we've got we've got balloon footage at 120,000 feet, shows nothing but a flat line. He said, oh, it's a beautiful curve, which means Mythbusters, I'm sorry, buddy, you're in on it. So uh, you're on my hit list. Do not uh, show up in a crosswalk when I'm driving, because I will not hit the brakes. Matthias writes, and I actually include this, I think, in the slideshow. Hopefully I did. God, did I? Hopefully I did. Uh, hi, my name is Matthias. I work at a large warehouse in northern Germany. I had to acquire a new vehicle earlier this year, and while registering it, I could not resist getting a flat one. In Germany, license plates begin with a city code. In my case, Flensburg is FL. So I got myself FL-AT51. 51, 51, 5 being a letter E and 1 being the letter A. Close as I could get, winky face. In times, it's hard living a flat earth life, but it has its bright sides. Feel free adding this to the list. Best, best regards, Matthias. Oh yeah, by the way, Matthias, if you're listening to this right now, um, I love the shot you sent of your car with the license plate, but send me a close-up of the license plate because the resolution is going to suck if I uh, zoom in on that thing, okay? Send me a close-up picture of your license plate, and I will definitely add it in. Uh, and I was really cool because, I mean, I, uh, yeah, they don't really have personalized license plates. 
in a lot of, a lot of countries. That's kind of an American thing and Canadian thing. I don't know if there's anybody else that does personalized plates besides, besides America and Canada. Okay, we're coming down to this now. Uh, it's uh, 50 minutes in, roughly. We're going to do two more. Maybe three more? Maybe three more. We'll see. Uh, hi, Mark. Thanks for replying so fast. The email's called The Truth. Uh, we are working on the video, and it'll be finished real soon this month. When it's finished, it needs to be spread to all. The video contains undeniable proof of the shape of the earth. Maybe this is much to believe right now. I understand, but you will be amazed. Can't say more. Just wanted you to know if you are ready for this big news. It's most important. Many will see this as fast as possible. Now I know you're ready. I need to know if others are ready too. You are the first that responded. Thanks again. I will speak to you soon when the time is right. Warm regards, Roland. And I think he's also from Germany. Apparently he's making a new flat earth video. I can't wait to see it. Like, you know, it, whoever comes up with a slam dunk video that's going to bury the globe for good, you know, I'm all for it. And I was absolutely promoted on my stuff. Uh, let's see two more. Uh, let's see here. This one's atmospheric pressure test. Hi, Mark. This is Ahmad Al Radi from Saudi Arabia. Long time subscriber, first time reaching out. Just want to suggest to you to continue your flat earth clues with new things. And here's a clue you can work with. Atmospheric vacuum pressure in the pretend, pretended space is very high and strong and can rip and suck all the air uh, in our earth. Why doesn't it? Is our atmosphere that strong? Then why does it allow rockets and things to go through it? Is our pretend gravity that strong that it can hold down the air? Then why does it allow planes to take off? Here's a look at the test. And he sends a YouTube link. Uh, can I translate some of your videos to Arabic language and reload them into a YouTube channel? Your friend, Flat Earther friend, Ahmad. Yeah, anyone wants to, to load this, I gotta remember to write him back. Uh, he just wrote that this morning. Um, Anyone that wants to, to I've, I've done, it's, it's in a whole bunch of different languages right now. I mean, YouTube already has a translation, at least a subtitle feature. And so I give them all the transcripts. And so it's not perfect by any stretch. Uh, translating English into any other language through YouTube is not a beautiful process. But if anyone wants to take my stuff and translate it to another language, I will send you the transcripts. Uh, you know, I've got, uh, I wrote all the script for the, uh, flat Earth clues. I've got it all written down, so I can I can shoot it to you. You can reread it, do whatever you want with it. I don't, it doesn't really matter as long as the word gets out. Pfft, you don't even have to give me credit. I mean, the two of the the most, in fact, the two highest watched videos on YouTube regarding Flat Earth uh, never even gave me credit. Well, I mean, they did, one of them gave me credit in the description, but it wasn't in the title. Uh, one of them was called They Are Hiding God with the Greatest Lie Ever, which I think has 2 million hits. And then one's called Under the Dome Documentary, full documentary, which has also got like 2 million hits at this point. So let's see. Can we get one more in? How about this one? This one's from Paul. All right. Let's. All right. Let's do this. This one will be from Paul. This will be a good, good one. Hello, Mark. Love your show and listen by way of YouTube. I would like a copy of the paper written by Dale called The Throne of God, his physics paper. That's from a Strange World episode that I did. I can't remember the number off the top of my head, but it was when a flight in, the flight instructor and the air traffic controller met and we were talking. And one of them was, his name was Dale, and he has actually written a, a paper, uh, heavy, heavy math, quantum type of paper. Anyway, uh, as it's called Harmony, and I can email it to people if they want it. It's pretty big. It's like six megs. As a Bible believer and hold the belief that the powers that be in this world are in direct contact with the powers that be in the spiritual realm of this world, uh, like Satan and his fallen angels. There are things Dale said but would not talk about further on concerning the Illuminati and Wickcraft and putting things out there for people to believe in and gives the power to create and the deceptions and make lies uh, reality. Basically, I, I have to hear more of what this guy has to say on the subject. I have a start up podcast not worth mentioning to you at this point uh, is more of a hobby right now, but hopefully one day I'll be able to get uh, have a real guest on. Uh, but has Dale ever went on anyone else's show to discuss this further? I don't I don't know if he has. Um, uh, let's see. And is there a contact or email that might be able to see if I can pick his brain on some questions that have been eating at me ever since I heard the interview? I have listened 20 times. Good Lord. Best interview ever, in my opinion. Well, it was, was intriguing. That was one of my more interesting interviews. That's for, for sure. Thanks. And as you stay, stay flat. Uh, we'll end on that email. And the what he's talking about is one of a series of, of interviews that I did called the, the Flat Earth 
uh, subject matter experts or they're known as the testimony shows as a playlist on it and i've got you know trailer for the playlist and, and you know each of the each of the shows is pushing two hours and they're totally worth it i mean you know it's everybody you know engineers and all branches of the military and pilots and air traffic controllers and anyone you can think of you know surveyors what's great about that series is you're listening to these guys and you get to remember nobody recanted not one of those people called me up and said you know what i completely changed my mind not only that i didn't solicit any of them they all called me and said look i want to talk about this i think you're onto something and on top of that nobody in their respective professions no 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 peers contacted me to go out against them you know nobody called me up and said that navy guy's a bunch of crap i work on the sparrow system myself and i think the earth is a globe nobody ever did that nobody's done that the the retention rate of flat earth is almost perfect almost it's like 99.99 percent perfect anyone that goes down the flat earth road they don't come back out of it you know they never go back to the globe they never do uh, there was only one guy that ever tried his name was tiger dan 925 i believe that was his youtube channel from london and he tried to come crawl out of the rabbit hole, and then he disappeared. We don't even know. His, his channel's still up there, still gaining subscribers. He has more subscribers than I do. Uh, but he, he's gone. He's disappeared. He's never made a video appearance. He's never gone on anyone's show. No one knows where he is. So, anyway, let's end on a positive note. Uh, thank you guys for everyone who's writing in. If you want to write, write in, and um, if I like your email, I'll read it on the air. Uh, on Strange World, and if I can't get through that, so I, you know, because I get so many emails, I will try to do an email show and read it here. My email address is msargent23 at comcast.net. Anyway, thanks, guys. See you next time.